Time to get a few things on the way. It is ridiculously hot in here, of course, because it is ridiculously hot everywhere <laughs> today. I'm going to stir up the tops of each of these to make sure that they don't have any stems and roots. These were all used so far. I'll have to check, but I think these were all used for uh, cabbage family plants. This was kohlrabi over here. So we have some smaller stems and roots. I'm not much for forks, but this one is really great for doing what I'm doing right now, which is just breaking it up. And uh, the, the soil is super dry because it hasn't been watered in a, probably two months. And the good part about that is it's very easy to get out the dry dead bits. I want to make sure the dirt is packed around the edges because if I put water into these and there's nothing packed around the edges, so the water's just going to run down instantly. Now it's going to run into a saucer, so it will get sucked back up, but I'd like to keep as much in there to start with as possible because this is going to be a project. This is mineral deposits. Okay, that'll give me 10. I know I need a lot more than that. Because these were stacked, the uh, containers farther down were actually protected from evaporative loss. So this is actually soft. It's interesting how little effort it takes to maintain the moisture in there. One of the things you'll notice is that when I am doing this, I am taking note of what was planted in there before. Now, why would I do that? Well, we try very hard to do rotation cropping, which means we try not to plant the same things in the same containers or locations year after year or season after season or whatever. Now, because we do have limited space, we can't do the, you know, 
five year thing or something like a lot of people are recommending. But we do try not to plant plants from the same family in the same pot immediately after one another. And if we can avoid it for several iterations of planting, so much the better. Now the reason people want to do this is because if there is a disease that could be in the soil, you don't want to encourage that disease by planting another plant that's susceptible to it. So by switching off between family groups, which are generally susceptible to different sorts of things, it gives the situation a break. <coughs> it can break pest cycles and disease cycles. <coughs> I should have brought a drink of water with me. I didn't. I know better. I said, I'm just running out there for a second. <coughs> but it's more than a second, of course. <laughs> I can feel the grit. There's a big spider web here somewhere. <coughs> I do have to be careful. We do get some nasty grab spiders around here sometimes. I have gotten rid of a couple of uh, black widows in here before. And I try and leave spiders alone as much as I can, but anything that's poisonous, I'm sorry. You chose the wrong place to live. We have an entire 43 acres out there, and there's only a couple acres that you're not allowed to live in. <laughs> this was obviously a cabbage. <laughs> Initially, I'm not going to add any soil to this because I'm just prepping the existing soil, but I will add soil before this gets used. And uh, you'll notice that some of these are kind of low. And that's because that soil has literally been used up by the heat and the bacteria and the other things living in the soil and the plants eating nutrition out of there and all that kind of stuff. Okay, this has been on the bottom, so it has more moisture in it. It also has a label that says Copenhagen. So this was um, cabbage. I would say that I probably already got all the stems and roots out of this one because it's turning beautifully and it is slightly moist. So that's cool. This has been kept from evaporating completely by the uh, pots on top of it. So it did not desiccate. Blah. All right. Whew. Nothing like sweat in your eyeballs. That is not as many as I will need long term, but it's a start. Uh, so I need no more of those up here. I don't want to fuss with that uh, <laughs> particular, let's see here. To cheat and take one off the bottom so it won't be quite as dry. <laughs> dust, dust, look. A lot of times when I'm actually filling pots like this, I will wear a dust mask because my sinuses do not like this crap. <laughs> okay, so that's fine. And one more here. This was pop choy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all cabbagey things. Uh, doesn't have to be perfection. Just has to be functional. <laughs> I actually need to remove this from here. I'm going to put it here temporarily, but it needs to go in the trailer. I mean in the truck. 
Okay. Uh, let's see how our water is here. Okay. This one here should be pretty full. <coughs> now this is hot enough to boil an egg. <coughs> but that's okay. There's nothing alive in this pot. What I'm doing is I'm watching to see that the water comes out the bottom of these pots. In some cases it's come out pretty quickly because the soil is really dry and just sort of rolls out the bottom. In other cases it didn't come out quite as quickly, but my goal is to get these pretty soggy so that they have a good quantity of water in them to start with. I know I need to refill the barrels, but I believe that bottom, that right hand barrel there is pretty full. So that'll be a job for tomorrow. I gotta refill the barrels. And uh, yeah, some other stuff. <laughs> but this is the setup. <laughs> this is the setup for the project I wanna do tomorrow. <sighs> Daughter. Hello. Hey everybody, we're back at the greenhouse. If you saw yesterday's video, you saw I did a sort of a preemptive strike on these uh, uh, buckets. I watered them good. Are they as damp as I'd like them to be? No, definitely not. But what I'm going to do first thing this morning 
is add more dirt to them and add more water to them because I want these 100% when I get going today. This is still better than it was before by a lot. Some of these are actually really pretty good. Like this one is really great. This one, mm, a little less so. But not bad in comparison to what it was. So it's going to be noisy because the fans are running. There's no way I'm turning off that van because I will melt. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> I will melt. I'm not trying to bring these all the way up to the very top because I'll be planting into these, so I don't want to wind up with too much dirt. You can stay there. It's okay. Okay, back up. I don't want to run you over. Come on. <sighs> beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> So what I'm going to need to do today is actually reload those barrels. This water is quite warm right now. And if I were I actually had plants in here, I would be running it into a bucket because I could literally roast my plants but I'm not concerned about roasting the dirt. Still don't have water coming out the bottom of some couple of these. I had water coming out the bottom of every one of them yesterday because I wanted to make sure that as much as possible I had soaked these. But I knew that partially due to the different uh, moisture contents of the various buckets of soil, there would be differences in the amount of water that is in here. Now I can see the water starting to come out the bottom here, which is great because I want it to come out. I want it to come out and I want it to be puddled in the bottom so that the water can be drawn back up when it's needed. And sometimes the water will run through even though the water, the soil is not moist enough. So I want to be sure that I've got this really well done before I start planting. Now obviously you saw me put some new potting soil on top. I always do that when I refresh my buckets. Right now it's hard to want to do that, I have to admit, because there have been quite a few instances of herbicide poisoning in compost and stuff around the United States. <coughs> this stuff is a bit older. Most of it's been sitting here for at least six months. And uh, I'm just gonna have faith for now. I hate having to do that because uh, I don't really have faith in these people, but I am planning to actually contact, I'm sure there's a um, information line somewhere on the packaging. I'm actually going to contact the information line and see what they have to say about the herbicide issues in the United States because 
it's come through on a couple of uh, YouTube channels that they have wound up with soil that was effectively poisoned with herbicide. And that's a big hassle. You know, people are like, oh, well, we'll replace the dirt. Yeah, but you can't replace my growing season. Am I running out of water here? I suppose I could be. Uh, yeah, let me check. Might need to tilt the barrel. Yeah, I need to tilt the barrel. Okay. Where's my barrel tilter? <laughs> I have some high-tech barrel filters. It's called a board. There we go. That'll let me get a lot more water out of there. And I do need to refill these. <laughs> I'm going to have to run the hose from the rain water collection tank <laughs> it's spitting right now because it has water it has air in the line let's see how we've gotten here now that this is all sat for a minute i can see <coughs> which ones really didn't put any water into the uh, bottom tray and here we have one of those lovely rocks that we occasionally buy in our compost I do find that annoying. It's like, yeah, rocks will compost, but it takes thousands of years. <laughs> That's not in my mm, time scale, shall we say. And they don't really compost. What they do is the out exterior of them breaks down. <coughs> and over time, the minerals from the rocks will go into solution to some extent. It depends what kind of rock it is as to how fast that happens. Things like mudstone and sandstone will disintegrate a lot faster, especially if you have freeze-thaw cycles, than something that's a um, igneous or uh, metamorphic rock. But I'm not teaching geology. <laughs> well, I did have a minor in it in, uh, in uh, undergraduate. Those were the old days when my professor was on the cutting, bleeding edge of theory. He believed in plate tectonics back before it was in the textbook. And I remember him, we got the textbook and he said, you're going to ignore these first, I don't know how many chapters. He said, this is all wrong. He said, the theory of the future is plate tectonics. And that explains how the different sections of the Earth move and why mountain ranges are raised up and other things are subsumed, which means they go back under the crust. And all that good stuff. A very cool dude. He actually passed just fairly recently, like within the last uh, five years. Somehow it was not shocking since he was... We, they were not... Teacher, professors were not allowed to smoke in the classrooms where I went to, went to university as an undergraduate, <laughs> thank goodness. But uh, if you saw him out of the classroom, he was never without a cigarette in his hand. So yeah, he was a very heavy chain smoker and he finally passed. Okay, I think I'm running out of water. So. <coughs> yep, I am. Nothing like standing in front of an evaporative cooler when you are warm. <coughs> All right, what I need to do is set up the hoses for transferring water, start bringing in plants, and we'll see how we're going. I should check that one in the corner. I have a big pot in the corner back here. Uh, that did good. I really soaked this well. It wasn't super bone dry to start with, and it has water in the bottom. Yes. So I am a happy camper. Happy camper!
taking this guy out of here. He needs to be cleaned and he needs to get packed because he goes with us to Pennsylvania. 